What's up guys, Wagley here and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys the best settings for Streamlabs OBS in 2022. These will be the best settings that you can use for the best quality depending on the power of your computer. So let's get right into it. Assuming you already have Streamlabs OBS downloaded, if you don't, I'll leave a download link in the description. But the first thing that you want to do that sometimes people like to overlook is search up Streamlabs OBS and then pin it to taskbar. Once it's on your taskbar, right click it, right click Streamlabs OBS, click properties, advanced, and check this run as administrator. Click OK, apply, OK. Doing this will fix a lot of performance issues and improve the overall stream quality and your streaming experience. So if you notice, whenever you click on Streamlabs, it'll ask you if you want to allow it to make changes to your device, just click yes. Okay, and here we are in Streamlabs. To access the settings, go into the gear icon in the bottom left, and let's get started. Okay, so in this general tab, if you scroll down over here, there is an automatically record when streaming option. If you want to record while you're streaming, so you can have your entire stream saved onto your computer if you want to edit it and post it later, you can check this option here if you want that. It will just record your entire stream anytime you're streaming. That's optional. If you don't want that, then you don't have to check it. Next, let's go over to the stream tab. Whichever streaming service you're using, most likely either YouTube or Twitch, just make sure it's connected with that particular account. Now, especially if you're streaming to YouTube, I recommend instead of just linking your YouTube account and streaming directly through Streamlabs, if you want a little more control over your stream, I would stream to a custom ingest. That's what I do when I stream, because then you can go to the YouTube live control room on the website and just paste in the stream key here. And you can also do this for any of these streaming services or Twitch if you want to. I like doing this because you can set up everything, all the settings on your stream beforehand on the YouTube website. And then all you have to do is just paste in the stream key here. I just recommend this much more because it's much easier to control your stream. Also, when you're streaming with the recommended settings just through Streamlabs, you will have limited options and abilities through here. But you still can do that if you don't care as much and you want it just to be a little simpler. Since it's all just through the Streamlabs app, you can do that as well. And also, if you're streaming to Twitch, it doesn't matter as much because you don't need a thumbnail and then there's less to set up. But if you want the most overall control over your stream, I'd stream to a custom ingest. Next is the output settings. Make sure your output mode is set to advanced and not simple so you can have the most options for your stream quality. Leave audio track on one unless you change something specific with your audio settings. Okay, next is the encoder. This is really important for your stream quality, so make sure to listen to this part of the video. Hardware NVENC New uses your computer's graphics card while software x264 uses your computer's cpu if you have the hardware nvic new option definitely use that because that means that you have a newer nvidia graphics card because the encoding will not affect your gaming performance because it's actually happening on an entire separate chip in the gpu but if you don't see this option is because you have an older nvidia gpu or you have an amd graphics card in this case you will have to use software x264 for encoding so pretty much if hardware nvenc new is available for you use it if it's not use software x264 you may have another special option for an amd graphics card but the quality won't be nearly as good as hardware nvenc new or software x264 so if you're going to be using hardware nvenc new then watch this part right now, I will explain all the settings for this. But if you have to use software x264, then skip to the timestamp on the screen right now, because this part won't apply to you. So now I'm going to talk about hardware NVENC new settings. Make sure to leave this box unchecked for enforced streaming service encoder settings. Set the rate control to CBR. And now let's discuss the bit rate because this is actually one of the most important settings for your stream quality. And it depends entirely on your internet speeds. So to see what bit rate you can use, go to a website called speedtest.net. Just press go. Download speed doesn't really matter. What we're looking for is the upload speeds because that's how fast your computer can upload things to the internet. So as you can see, my upload speed is around 31 and this is in megabits per second. Now to find the bit rate, all you have to do is multiply this number by 1000. So I'm gonna get a calculator out. 
so I have 31,000. But don't be running ahead and setting your bitrate to this because you should subtract around 30% of this. So just multiply it by 0.7. And realistically, whatever this number is for you, you should not set your bitrate higher to this. Thankfully, I have pretty fast internet upload speeds, so this won't be a problem for me. 21,000 bitrate is more than enough. The reason you want to subtract 30% from this is because there could be other people in your house using internet. You just want to make sure to have some wiggle room. So if you're streaming to YouTube, use this chart to find your bitrate. So just look through the resolutions and see which resolutions you are able to use. So if you're streaming to 720p at 60fps, you can go as low as 2250 bitrate. But if you want to do 1080p 60fps, which is what I recommend, streaming at you'll need at least 4500 bitrate and the highest that you'll be able to take advantage of is 9000 and there's no reason to set this any higher than 9000 because it will just be wasting your internet but if you're absolutely ridiculous and you're going to be streaming at 4k 60 fps then you'll need upwards of 20,000 bitrate to use this but there's really no point in streaming that that crazy quality i recommend 1080p 60 fps but if you need to, 720p 60fps or even just 720p at a lower FPS. Now, if you're streaming on Twitch, you'll have to use this chart, which is also going to be linked in the description, which is where you'll see the bit rates that you'll need to use for the specific stream qualities, which is where you'll see the stream quality that you need to use for the specific bit rates. Now on Twitch, there's no use in setting the bitrate higher than 6,000 because it actually can't go higher than that. So just keep that in mind. But on YouTube for 1080p 60fps, you can go up to 9,000. So I'm going to go over to my bitrate and fill in 9,000. The keyframe interval you want to leave at zero because that is automatic. Your preset should be at quality and the profile should be set to high. Turn off look ahead and turn on psycho visual tuning. Leave GPU at zero and set max B frames to two. But if you just filled in the settings for hardware NVENC new, then skip to this timestamp in the video. And that's it for hardware NVENC new. Now let's go over to software x264. So if you're using software x264, then watch this part for the settings that you want to use. Now you'll have to choose your bitrate. So to see what bitrate you can use, go to a website called speedtest.net. Just press go. Download speed doesn't really matter. What we're looking for is the upload speeds because that's how fast your computer can upload things to the internet. So as you can see, my upload speed is around 31. And this is in megabits per second. Now to find the bit rate, all you have to do is multiply this number by 1000. So I'm going to get a calculator out. So I have 31,000. But don't be running ahead and setting your bit rate to this because you should subtract around 30% of this. So just multiply it by 0.7. And realistically, whatever this number is for you, you should not set your bitrate higher to this. Thankfully, I have pretty fast internet upload speeds, so this won't be a problem for me. 21,000 bitrate is more than enough. The reason you want to subtract 30% from this is because there could be other people in your house using internet. You just want to make sure to have some wiggle room. So if you're streaming to YouTube, use this chart to find your bitrate. So just look through the resolutions and see which resolutions you are able to use. So if you're streaming to 720p at 60fps, you can go as low as 2250 bitrate. But if you want to do 1080p 60fps, which is what I recommend streaming at, you'll need at least 4500 bitrate. And the highest that you'll be able to take advantage of is 9000. And there's no reason to set this any higher than 9000 because it will just be wasting your internet. But if you're absolutely ridiculous and you're going to be streaming at 4K 60 FPS, then you'll need upwards of 20,000 bitrate to use this. But there's really no point in streaming that, that crazy quality. I recommend 1080p 60 FPS. But if you need to, 720p 60 FPS or even just 720p at a lower FPS. Now, if you're streaming on Twitch, you'll have to use this chart, which is also gonna be linked in the description, which is where you'll see the bit rates that you'll need to use for the specific stream qualities, which is where you'll see the stream quality that you need to use for the specific bit rates. Now on Twitch, there's no use in setting the bitrate higher than 6,000 because it actually can't go higher than that. So just keep that in mind. But on YouTube for 1080p 60 FPS, you can go up to 9,000. 
Okay, once you have your specific bitrate in, make sure to leave off, use custom buffer size, and leave keyframe interval at zero for auto. For the CPU usage preset, the lower you go on this list, the higher the quality your stream will be, but it will use more power from your CPU. So if you have a slower CPU, then I would go with ultra fast, super fast, or very fast. However, just remember the quality won't be as good. So you're going to need to find a nice balance between quality and performance, depending on the power of your CPU, and set profile to high. Then you don't need to worry about this stuff down here. And now the last important part is video. This applies to whether you're using hardware NVENC new or software x264. So whatever quality that you decided that you have to use from the bitrate chart, then set both of these ones to that here. If the quality you chose isn't in one of these, then just press use custom and you can fill it in here. I'm personally going to be using 1920 by 1080. Set the downscale filter to land coast and down here you can choose your FPS. 60 FPS is going to be the best. That's what you most likely want to be using. But if you are having a lot of performance issues, or you have a slower PC or slower internet, you can try going down to 30 FPS. But just keep in mind, if you are gaming, the stream will look really choppy on 30 FPS. Once you have all your settings filled in, just press done. And now you're ready to begin streaming. So that's it for the Streamlabs OBS best quality settings. If you want a tutorial on how to set up your scenes, alert boxes, or anything else in Streamlabs, let me know and I can make a tutorial on that also. But that's it with this video, guys. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>